Welcome back. So in the previous video, we have been discussed about the length of path of contact and uh, length of arc of contact. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the interference and what is the minimum number of teeth uh, to avoid an interference. So the interference is what do you mean by an interference? So interference uh, interference is nothing but an the phenomena when the tip of the tooth undercuts the root if the mating area of its mating area that is what is known as an interference or what we call it as a contact of portion of two tooth profiles so the contact between the two tooth profiles which will not conjugate a, conjugate is called as an interference you can able to see this so this is how the interference that is what we have been taken as interference so whenever the two diagrams are to, which will be able to not able to conjugate during this process so what we are going to see is about the how the mating gears will takes place and here we can able to see this that is the tangential line where we have been drawn that will be the point so where we can able to see the conjugate that is what we call it as an interference so by considering this as an example we will see this so this is about the how the two gear teeth will takes place whenever it will be having an, uh, in a two contact between the two gears so this is how we going to be takes place so this is the portion whenever uh, which this is the portion which will be having a contact with this other teeth if it is uh, rotating in one direction that is clockwise direction means so the other gear which is rotating in the anti clockwise direction so whenever these two both are go, may, mating at one particular point the both the gears will be having a continuous having will be coinciding that is what we have been seen in the tangent line where we can able to see this this is the portion where it is can able to be having a continuous contact so that is a, what the portion now this interference helps in order to find the how many number of gears should be there in order to avoid the interference if how many number of gears will be coinciding then we, which we can able to uh, get an interference this is the portion where we can able to see the interference whenever it is the this you can able to see this gear is completely coinciding that is what we called as an undercutting and this is the gear which will be there see you can able to have been shown that portion this is the portion where we can able to see the interference so this is how what we called as an interference so next we are going to discuss about the interference how many number of your teeth should be there in order to avoid the interference if we, if in order to avoid the interference how many number of teeth if it will be in the coinciding then easily or automatically we can able to avoid this interference so that now we will going to be looking into the how many number of teeth should be there in order to avoid the that particular interference See, minimum number of teeth required to avoid interference see by considering the example now o1 o2 this will be the pinion and this is the rack which will be rotating in the opposite direction where you can able to see this we have been considered as an o1 and o2 so this line what we called as in a base circle this will be the pitch circle and this is the center line and you can able to see this the tangents d and c where the both the points we have been written that is what we called as in a pressure line where this we called as an addendum circle and this is a pitch circle base circle b wheel and this is an add, add, uh, addendum circle so this is what we have been considered o2 now we have in a triangle that is o1 d c will be the one triangle o2 d and c will be the other triangle where p is the pitch formation where alpha is an angle pressure line we can able to see this is the center line where the both the lines will be or the both the pressure line and a uh, pitch circle will be coinciding at this particular point or a particular pitch point what we call it as in a p pitch circle that is what the where the both the coinciding point will takes place that is what we call it as in a pitch circle p so it is rotating pinion is rotating in anti clockwise direction and the rack is rotating in the clockwise direction now coming to the how we can able to avoid the uh, how we can able to find out the minimum number of teeth required to avoid an interference so pinion turns, uh, turns counter clockwise and drives the gear where cd is a common tangent so here the pinion turns the it will be rotating in the counter clockwise direction which will drives this particular gear so where uh, c and d are in a common points common tangent and c and d are interference points even this c and d are both a common tangent point along with it it will be uh, coinciding with the axis so it will be the interference points and if the path of the contact does not exceed behind either of these points that is what we called as interference will be avoided if the path of contact 
it will be within this uh, d and c means it will not if you if you don't goes behind this point d and c then automatically the interference will not takes place but once if you goes the behind this uh, pointing that is the tangential and the common by interference point c and d once it goes behind this automatically we need an uh, some minimum number of teeth should be there in order to avoid this interference where it will not come out or it will be not slipped out from that gate lines so that is od is from o1 to d will be the limiting value of the addendum circle of the pinion and o2 to o2 to c will be the limiting value for the addendum circle of uh, radius of the gear this o2 to d what we have been seen it will be the addendum circle of the pinion and o2 to p d o2 to c it will be having an addendum circle from the uh, pin uh, rack or what we called as an pinion already the pinion is driving this gear so we will consider as this rack or we will going to consider as an wheel rotating wheel or which having a gear trains which will be rotating on the wheel now each addendum circle radius is compared with the limiting value in order to determine there will be interference so each this each addendum circle will be comparing whether it will be having an interference line either both even in the pinion and even on the wheel will going to be comparing so next interference likely to occur on the pinion then the gear so normally the interference will majorly occur on the pinion rather than the gear so on this case the critical radius oc o2 to o2 to c which limits the number of teeth on a pinion so normally the interference will occur on this pinion not on the gear so this is the gear so pinion so for that what we are going to do interference will likely occur on the pinion then on the gear and in this case the critical radius o2 to c will be having the limits to the number of teeth see o2 to c which will be having or we are they going to limit or they going to restrict to the limiting number of teeth in order to avoid this interference on the pinion next o1 to p that is the pitch circle of the pinion will be mt by 2 that is what are we going to measure and the t will be is nothing but a number of teeth on the pinion aw indicates the addendum uh, circle of a constant gear ap means the addendum constant of pinion aw means addendum of gear ap means addendum of pinion where the g is nothing but gear ratio gear ratio can be indicated by capital t by small t now from the right angle triangle o2 to cd we can able to see them o2 to cd the right angle triangle which is there so o2 to c square will be o2 d square plus cd square will be equal to o2 d square plus cp plus pd all square again when if you rewrite this equation so o2 d square plus o1 into p into sin theta plus o2 p into sin theta that is all square that is ra will be equal to rb square so again when you substituting that r into cos theta square plus r plus r that is r plus r square into sin square theta so that will be equal to r square into cos square theta plus r square into sin square theta plus r square sin square theta plus 2 into r sin square theta where r square will be equal to taking outside as in a common r square cos square theta plus sin square theta plus small r square into sin square theta plus what we have been there written that is 2r sin square theta by equating that r square plus capital r square plus small r square into sin square theta plus 2r Two small r into capital r into sin square theta. Now, the main equation what we got the it is to avoid the minimum number of teeth in order to avoid the interference. That is, R A will be equal to root of R square plus capital R square plus small r square into sin square pi plus two into capital R minus small r into sin square pi. So this is the equation what we got. Our this is the equation in order to uh, we are going to use in order to find the minimum number of teeth required to avoid this interference we can able to see this in this uh, diagram so the capital r that is what we going to consider the capital r will be nothing but m by t and the small r what we been to consider that is the radius of pinion and the capital r is nothing but an uh, radius of gear where the pi is a pressure angle radius of the pinion radius of the gear and the pi is nothing but an uh, pressure angle by using this by all this radius of the pinion and radius of the gear and by using the pressure angle we can able to find out the minimum number of teeth in order to avoid the interference so this is the equation by using this equation we can able to find the number of teeth to avoid the interference